Hey everyone, welcome to JLEG 3 u So today we're going to be working on a wonderful, interesting engineering concept by Mr. Hearth. It's called the Hearth Joint and uh, it was surprisingly difficult to understand how to do it because all the information I found online was missing a crucial piece. But I'm going to show it to you and I'm going to simplify it for you so you can just... You're going to have a wonderful time following this tutorial. So let's go ahead and start with a circle. And we're going to make it 25 degrees, or rather 25 millimeter inner diameter and 50 millimeter outer diameter. And you can technically do this any size you want, but this is just the one I, sh I chose. Next, we're going to draw a line. Make sure it extends past your outer diameter so that you can use it. And we're going to select it and then exit sketching so that we can revolve it. We're going to copy it over and select 5 degrees for each side for a total of 10 degrees. And then make sure, very crucial step here, you lock the sketches into place so they don't move as we're gonna be working on this next step. So go ahead and sketch a line from this point to this point, and then create a triangle to that center piece. And it doesn't matter what kind, because once you select these, you can select this edge and it will make an automatic 60 degree triangle. And 60 degrees and 90 degrees is the standard for the hearth joints, but uh, you can technically do any size you want. Anyways, let's select this triangle. And again, if you didn't lock into place, everything, will, all your sketches will move. So that's why I said you have to use that crucial step. But go ahead and select everything, then exit sketching. And move that to this point there so we can rotate it by 90 degrees. And then simply double click that triangle so we can sketch it. And click outside so we can unselect it. And then select, uh, um, not select but draw a line across there so we're going to do a triangle within a triangle and then select this triangle and exit sketching to move again because it auto selects the move tool so we move it by 12.5 which is half of that but in this case it doesn't really matter because we're going to translate it anyways so moved it whatever but now we rotate it by 180 degrees and since it's already selected we click more and click translate and then we're gonna do edge to edge here. So make sure it goes to that actual edge. And if you can't see it, zoom in. Because the thing is, it's a circle right there. So if you select that circle, it's gonna automatically go to the center. So make sure that you have it right. And I just messed up because I was trying to show you, but basically more translate from this edge to this edge right there, all right? Click done. And then this is the magic part that's missing from all the information from what I found. You can select this triangle. You simply sketch a line from the bottom to the top. And then from the center here to the top, we sketch a line. And this is the magic number that we need to move our triangle up to get that perfect angle to make sure that our teeth mate and mesh together perfectly, okay? So 0.9435, let's try to remember that as we go. So 0.9435, select it. Point 9435. Very important that you get this exact number because otherwise it will not mesh perfectly. So now we delete those lines as we no longer need them and they will interfere with our loft. And uh, we go to tools, loft, we select our triangles to make that loft. And we have our very first tooth. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you a sped up method of how to do less work because if you don't follow this tutorial you're going to have to do a lot more manual labor but if you follow along here it's going to be a lot easier for you so we're going to go ahead and tools split body and we're going to use the axis there to cut it in half then we're going to going to isolate that little piece there and select it as a plane to work on all right next we go and lower it by two degree or two millimeters and then as we sketch our line, we just hover over that edge so that we can align it with it as we go down. That helps to sketch better. All right, now make sure you close your sketch there at the top and then go to tools, revolve, select our little piece that we just made and revolve it around the center. And this is also an important step. You need that cone shaped circle, otherwise it will not work out properly. So let's go ahead and turn isolate off and uh, what we can do now to save ourselves a little time. Uh, one thing I do want to say is instead of cutting it, you could have just clicked right and then section view 
I just cut it because I like how clean it was and make sure you actually select it because there we go. Uh, you could have used that plane or you can just cut it. That depends on you because in this case, I kind of have to union this together to save myself some work, but it, it's fine. So tools, replace face because we want to match the outer diameter, right? But before that, we need to actually make our diameter correct. So 50 millimeters on this and then uh, deselect that and select 25 for that. And now we can go in and tools replace face to copy those to make sure our tooth is aligned. And we do also have to do the same thing to the same thing to the bottom because as we lofted it, it wasn't a uh, revolved shape and it won't match up. So we have to select that bottom piece, select this face, and now we have a perfectly aligned tooth. Okay, and uh, once we have this, now we have to split our body again. And the reason I kind of did twice is because it's so easy to do, so it's not an issue. So now we select this body and that body, and we copy it, make sure you're in the center, by 10 degrees to each side. And then we delete these edges. And you're probably asking, why are you doing this? It's because I'm planning the head. And if you don't, you will have a lot of extra work. So just follow along, trust me on this, okay? Next, we click Union from the Tools menu. Select everything by just moving that across. And another very crucial step is to make sure that you copy it and rotate it 180 degrees right now instead of later because we're going to use this top piece as a reference and then move it up by two. And we can technically hide this for now because we don't need it until later. And the reason for that is that once you do what we're going to do next right now, the aligning feature will be a lot more difficult because the calculations will change. Since, for example, once we chamfer this, the height of this object has now changed. And now we have to do decimal point interactions, etc. So now we go ahead and do the valleys here by filleting these by 0.25 because I want to stick to that pattern of design. And then for the top, we chamfer by 0.5. It has to be bigger than the bottom, otherwise it won't mesh properly. So 0.5 and make sure that's a negative for that chamfer. And as you can see, the sides here are different than the center. So we have to fix that by replacing the face. So we select that. And then that we double click and then the face that we want and click done. All right. Now this will save us a lot of work. <laughs> and uh, we now select this whole piece and click the pattern tool. Make sure it's centered just in case and then revolve it by 360 degrees. And since I've done this before, I know that if you do 18 and you union these, you will have kind of dual edges here that we don't want. Right. So to fix that, you do 36 which is kind of a double over standard that you need, but you click done. And once we union these, those lines actually go away because we don't need those body lines anyways. So we drag it across to union it. And now we have our completed hearth joint. And uh, one last piece that we have to do obviously is to rotate it to verify that it works. But I want to change this to the brushed aluminum because as you know, this is a project for CNC machines. So once you have a CNC and you do that, this is basically what it's going to look like once you cut it. All right, uh, let's go back to modeling. And uh, remember, we had that one that we hid. We're going to use it for reference. And the reason for that is, like I said again, for alignment. So we're going to copy over our, our done piece by 180 degrees. We turn off the copy. We rotate it by five degrees and then we move it up however much you want. Doesn't really matter because we're gonna select these two faces to get the measurement. So in this case, 12.5661. All right, make sure you remember that number, 12.5661. Delete that and move that by 12.5661. And we have perfectly meshed hearth joint, okay? And I know this, this project seems super simple if you're following along, but boy, was it difficult to find out 
how to actually accomplish this because when I was doing this project in the beginning, like when I first saw it, it looked super simple, but all the results I was getting either on the inside it was wrong or on the outside one or the other was always wrong until you have that perfect number to align it with. So make sure you follow along the steps and don't forget that when you're using that triangle, you do the line from the bottom to the top and then from half to top. And that's the magic number that you need. So let's go ahead and hide those sketches. And we're gonna go into modeling, visualization. And as you can see, perfectly meshed earth joint on both sides and this is a gorgeous project like uh, <laughs> it, it's a I don't know I don't know about how you feel about this but it was amazing to learn and it was super fun and this is a beautiful piece of engineering like I really love the way this works and I actually never even knew about these until I started this project so anyways i hope you guys learned something don't forget to like share and subscribe if you have any questions if you're stuck uh probably rewatch the video or go ahead and post on the bottom i will try to help as i can because now i do understand how to make these once it clicks you just piece of cake but until that happens it was definitely difficult so hope you guys enjoyed it i will see you guys in the next one bye bye here at JLake 3 d our goal is to inspire and empower you to create your own amazing projects. Please support our work so that we can keep doing it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to see more.